Hey, it's Alosha, and I'd love to show you how to make this food grower. So, it's one of the bonuses in my course, but it's such an important lesson that I actually want to share it with everybody. So, here's a small one using a, 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 a three 250 liter drum. And it's got a compost chute where you throw your compost. And I know this looks all fancy, so that there is an easy, easy way which I'm going to show you using a blue drum. Um, I haven't attended this at all. It's got an irrigation pipe with little irrigation nuggets. Yeah? I don't know if you can see these little green ones. Okay? And then I've obviously made a bigger one, which I'll show you later. But this small one can be fitting perfect for balcony and you can obviously use all your kitchen waste that you can throw in. And then you can extend it with one of these towers. It actually fits in. Oh, it's a bit overgrown, but let's see if we can fit it in. There we go. So you can add additional planting pl additional plants that can grow and increase the surface area so this is takes about um, 80 by 80 centimeters so it uses very little space and you can put a tray at the bottom with a submersible pump that can be actually a little wetland with wetland plants slightly bigger maybe a meter or 1.2 and then gravel and then you've got the wetland plants that treat that water so you in a flat so you shower or bath you take that water put it in the tray and then the submersible pump and it just irrigates it through all of this and run a pipe one pipe here with a little um, you know outlet of water that can come down and irrigate your plants here as well so this can be done in a flat and there's a bigger version there but I'll show it to you shortly um, yeah I just want to show you some of the developments that I've made on on the uh, on this so hang ten okay so here is something I've had made up that can be bought actually from the shop because you get these elbows from the professional plumbing shop you know you'll get just an elbow and you fit in a piece of pipe and a piece of pipe I had this made up but again this is quite easy it's got some holes at the bottom and through at the bottom so for earthworm tea and then the earthworm tea can drip out here and here where you scoop out some compost so yeah this part will obviously have the holes drilled in and this is where your earthworms are going to come out into the main planting container making your organic soil and uh, this fancy contraption can also be replaced by a small uh, a blue drum a 150 liter blue drum or even if you want to start smaller let me show you something Yeah, you can use a little drum like that or even two of them fit it into each other you cut the bottom off and you put another one that has the top off and then obviously you have your holes for the worms to come out and then your drum is on the outside and that's filled with soil and it doesn't have to be any fancy soil because this is what's going to make the veggies pump is the earthworm castings so the main trick is to have something that a pipe, preferably something big, that you can scoop the um, earthworm compost out and then you can either put it on top or, or add it to your plant. So you're chucking your kitchen waste, no citrus, no onion, no meat, no fish, no oil, not too much oil. Everything else can go in here, no problem. And you get some good special worms Australian worms but they then they eat the stuff and they turn it into amazing castings 
or even some good earthworms will do yeah so i hope you're going to enjoy the lesson and uh it's, a, it's about you know almost an hour long so take the time because you're gonna by the end of the lesson you're gonna know how to make a self-irrigating food growing machine that grows you 15 gra trays of weed grass as well as um like a hundred veggies on 1.2 square meters or a smaller version like this so i hope you're all clear this unit the reason that this part is here so you can get that compost out so we'll have a lid here and then the earthworm tea drips out and then you can just get the compost will fall down so as you feed it worms do their thing come out through these holes and then you get the excess compost out as you take compost out you can put in more from the top so really simple project i mean you're gonna bang it out in a weekend i'm not joking okay enjoy and if you do like the lesson and you'd like to support me please purchase my either water course or my dome home construction course i'll put a link to my website at the end of the video enjoy all right so let me explain to you about this food grower <laughs> it's my fifth prototype so i'm going to sketch it out for you i haven't had the time yet to build the fifth prototype but i built four of them already so when i build it i'll record the footage which should still happen this year and um, but right now I've got already plenty of footage of the previous prototypes and I'll just give you the refinements of the fifth prototype here on the board of what's working what's not working what what, what can be tweaked and and so on so the, the first thing is um, understand the mechanics so let me just give you a little sketch here all right so you've got this square drum Okay, that's the standard IBC flow bin. Okay, you obviously cut the, the top part off. So you've got open, open space here. Okay, and you can probably take one of these bars down or not. You can leave the little bars to the original height. You can always add some sticks to that too for tomato plants. Okay. Then basically we, we, we're gonna cut little slits and I've got footage of all of that. So you've got the, the, the sides are 1.2 meters by one meter. The, the first change is that we're gonna put the 1.2 meter towards the sun and not the one meter. So, and the reason for that is that you can have the right side and the left side and then the front big side, which is gonna give you an extra almost you know half a you know extra space to grow food and then on the south side you've got this also wider side on, on the shady side that you're going to put five trays of wheat grass or microgreens five trays across and probably four or five trays down so you're going to have 25 trays on the shady side of microgreens automatic irrigation and um okay in the center this is the other change instead of doing fancy pipes or pvc pieces that only professional companies can do you're going to use a 150 liter blue pl plastic barrel uh, you can get them might be in green whatever colors but a 150 liters not too big but it's big enough that you can just keep on chucking the kitchen waste into it without fuss and just remember there is no oils no citrus no onion no meat no fish and no, 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 nothing funny, nothing that can, because the, those things, as you see from Natalie's video on worms, um, the oils and fish and meat, they breed mites and mites eat the worm eggs. So you don't want that. So in the center, you're gonna have this blue drum. It's gonna go all the way to the floor. Um, it comes with a lid and that lid, <laughs> and the lid, you can, um, Let me draw the lid for you here. Oh, sorry. Okay, so here's the lid. On the lid, so you don't have this black spot on top, you can have a little pot plant as well, or, or, or a microgreen tray, or a little round little pot plant. 
So you can have nice little plants coming out there as well. So every single square, square centimeter of this thing is being used, okay? And then obviously on the sides, you cut these slits and then you stick in a wooden pipe or 75 millimeter pipe, you heat them up. And I showed in the video, you stick in a pipe, you extrude it and then you have a wet cold cloth. You put it on and then it freezes in that shape very quickly. Otherwise you have to wait a long time for it to cool down. And that wet cloth just works like a bomb. So you have these little pockets that extrude out with lots of plants coming out. Okay, we're still figuring out the plants, but um, like your sages and your herbs that don't like water, they should be up on top, and things that like to be more water closer to the bottom. Um, obviously, on the sunny side, all your prime vegetables that like that. The tomatoes, we will get to all the vegetables now, um, but I just, you know, and the tomatoes would go on top. You, you could put four sticks up and even create a little cage if you need. Um, you know, and then you could have tomatoes growing up that cage as well. Okay, so I'm making a little mess of this. <laughs> There's our box. So th th that's a possibility, and then your tomatoes can, but also keep them on a, a shady side so they don't overshade the rest of the uh, plant. So anything tall, definitely on a shadier side anything shorter on the front side, okay? Um, but let's talk about the mechanics. So you've got the, the, you've got the blue drum. In the blue drum, we're gonna stick in a 25 mil pipe, 25 millimeter diameter pipe. That's gonna drive as close to the bottom as possible, and it's gonna have a slight angle, and it's gonna extrude out. Okay, so you'll just need to play in terms of the distances and uh, measuring tape and you'll need to cut a hole there, you need to cut a hole there. You drill a hole in with a drill bit and then use jigsaw, you go and you cut it out. Measure seven times, cut once. Okay, the reason for the angle is that you're going to have earthworm tea. Now actually earthworm tea, yeah some of it can come out here but we're going to do something else for earthworm tea in this refined prototype. So in this thing you will be able to get, uh, and I would stick it to the shorter side so it's easier to grab. So it's only literally, um, because that drum is about 50, uh, if you use the shorter side it's a meter. So let's look at it from the other side. Okay so, so it's a meter. Uh, 100 centimeters, yeah, and then you've got this drum that's 50, so it's only giving you 25 25 centimeters on both sides, and then it's got uh, the, the, the worm tower, uh, the worm pipe. I would probably even put it a bit lower, and okay, in fact, you could stick it in as low as possible because the earthworm T, then, so let's say that's the bottom of your drum. The earthworm tea will collect here and it will drain out because it's an angle all the way there. Okay, but we can do something else for earthworm tea and I'll plant some ideas and you can just, you know, play with what you feel comfortable. Um, because there could be still a little gap and some of the earthworm tea will sit at the bottom and then eventually will go froth. Um, smelly, funny. So, what, what, what I've done is um, I would put I would put this whole thing on a little block. Okay, I'd make a, a metal tray with sides that's that's maybe ten centimeters bigger all around. You can get any metal company to do that for you. Okay, so these blocks will obviously sit there. Any water that spills over, and there, there, there will inevitably be some, okay? Any water that spills over will be collected in this tray. That could be 10 centimeters high, the size of this tray. So it can take quite a bit of water, maybe 50 to 80 liters um, of spillage. And that water, <clears throat> you could have a little pump here, a little pump that will, uh, a little bulge pump. You could have a little bulge pump, which is a pump that is used with a solar panel. If you position it 
a solar panel to let's say morning sun as soon as the morning sun hits it it'll go and it will pump the water and give you you could put a little little sprinkler with it or you could arrange it all the way to the top of this and then have water coming down onto this box and irrigating it every morning automatically as soon as sun hits it and you could put a little panel tiny little panel maybe on the south side on the shady side just just a slight angle or whatever the angle is of the sun you know with some cable ties or something you can drill through aluminium sides and put four two cable ties here crisscross two cable ties here crisscross position it on your box this box could be a whole another cage a cage that these drums come with you could stick that box on top and which will run like this and you could have your uh, greenhouse clear fabric on it and this becomes now a nursery for winter time so it's, i haven't tried that yet but that's a really cool idea because this, these drums are so cheap they're 30 dollars here in south africa so you can get two drums <laughs> in fact the actual drum can be used in the ground to make your waterproof wetland so if you use that and the cage you don't need so you put one extra cage on top and this drum you put leave with the cage to obviously support all the soil okay the bottom of this drum the bottom of this drum i would put a, a bit of gravel maybe also about 10 centimeters of gravel right around around not inside the blue drum but inside the uh, everything else the gravel will allow the soil the the drainage to happen and then i would drill a couple of holes at the bottom maybe i don't know 20 holes one centimeter to let the gravel and any excess water to drain out in fact your earthworm tea can also drain out in this tray and now you've got a tray that's that's um um the tray that, that, that's full of a fertilized rich liquid. And so that doesn't start to smell. <laughs> and I'm sorry I'm layering it up for you, but this idea is, I mean, they're just actually coming to me right now. But so that doesn't start to smell. You could put also some gravel at the bottom, maybe bottom five centimeters of gravel. And uh, you could plant some additional plants in there, like, like some wetland plants, or you could put a bit of uh, sand on top you could put maybe three centimeters of sand on top and this is all new that's why i don't show you videos of this so five centimeters of gravel or even seven centimeters of gravel and, and three centimeters of sand and that could be your little propagation nursery where you do your cuttings that's a cool idea because cuttings they don't need sunlight and um they they will they will they will just they will just give you roots and germinate in that uh, rich uh, soil and obviously always plan for an overflow because you don't want this now tray to to start being so full of water the cuttings go rotten so maybe halfway just at the line of the gravel or maybe halfway i'd have a little overflow drill a little hole put a little a screw in um, a tank connector with thread just 15 millimeter the, the smallest tank connector you can get the 15 millimeter and then you can run a pipe to your garden so should that tray ever get too much then um then it will just, uh, you know, excess will drain out. But now that doesn't leave you much water for the pump, okay? So around the pump, always remember that it would be good to have some rocks, big rocks around the pump because uh, then it can take some of that water. And you need to position your panel that just gives you a few minutes of um, um, sucking, you know, and then this thing irrigates and that excess water drains out. Now, if you can get clever, you can make this tray a little bit higher. Maybe even, let's say these blocks are 20 centimeters. So make this tray also 20 centimeters. This way you could cover the blocks. You don't see them. You'll have enough water for the pump. I'd say you'll need at least 15 centimeters or 10 centimeters of water for the pump. Make sure around the pump, the maybe a center 70 by 70 centimeters is full of chunky rocks to allow water to just percolate straight to the pump so you've got the pump here you've got a water level now higher maybe at 15 centimeters you've got water level and uh, you've got your pump sitting here with irrigation line to the top you've got your seat you've got your cuttings all positioned here on the sides because obviously you can't get under the square drum and um, yeah, you could even plant some other short, 
plants there and maybe even stick in a grow lamp, you know, so if you want, which can also be powered by the same solar panels. Just ideas. Um, look, this is brand new material. You guys will also need to play a bit here. I've got four prototypes and I'll show you the video of how I've constructed it. But, uh, you know, you also need to just put a bit of love and energy and you'll figure it out. So just to recap, a 20 centimeter tray, galvanized tray, which will rust by the way, so I'll put maybe a sheet of plastic in it, or then it could be a wooden box with two layers of plastic. Don't nail the plastic to the box because that makes it obviously not watertight. So a wooden box, uh, size 1.4 by 1.2 will give you 10 centimeters all around gap for your cuttings. Um, at, 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 at about 13 centimeters, at about 13 centimeters, I'd put the overflow. At 13 centimeters, I'd put overflow. And up until 13 centimeters, I'd put gravel as well. So all of this 13 centimeters will be gravel. Then uh, you could put five centimeters of, uh, of sand and two centimeters of soil. So it will all look like soil, but at the end of the, and you can do your cuttings now, it will have water at the bottom. And, uh, and this pump pumps water and any excess drips out back in here. Um, you, could, you could put a toilet valve here on the side, which will automatically fill the tray and it will always be full from your tap. So the pump will, as soon as the sun hits it, the pump will irrigate it and excess will drain out. And when evaporation takes its place and the water level goes down, there is a toilet valve, which you can check from the biochar filter so your toilet valve does not implode with rocks and gravel so you do little brick little brick entrance and i've got great details on the biochar filter and you've got a little bowl valve there that basically tells um tells the pipe that's coming in from your tap this thing is at a good level so that's something and i'd love to see your pictures of this so it would be really great um so there is some refinement so just to recap instead of the pvc fancy pipe with a sideways shoot which i had which comes out at 45 degree, none of that. Blue barrel, you open the lid here. Obviously the cage, you make sure the cage is maybe on cable ties that can be easily flipped, but that will interfere with your tomatoes. So you need to play with that, but that's more for winter, the cage. I think tomatoes, they just need four sticks, you know, and then they can do, and they can do their thing. Um, and then in winter, you can take those sticks off and you can put the cage on and the cage must obviously be able to flip open close and open and the cage is covered in your plastic also again you can stitch it and you make sure you use the plastic clear plastic with mesh because it doesn't rip at all and then you can just use a bit of wire you cut the wire at an angle so you you make it like a needle and you just stitch with the wire and then it's done you know one sheet to go all the way around and this roof uh, you can just stitch that with wire the roof piece it doesn't have to be anything super watertight just as long as it keeps the warmth in uh, so the, just to recap, a drum here, uh, a, a piece of pipe which will go out um, with a lid and then you open the lid and then you can get your compost. Whether you use your hand with gloves because it can, you know, it won't smell. I mean, once the compost is ready, there's no smell. Um, otherwise, uh, it, it, there is these things called drywall screws and they go in flat and when you try and pull them out, they, they, they open up. If you could develop something like this from an engineer, maybe on a little spring that you push in, it closes, and when you pull out, it opens up. That way you can have this tool that you pull, push in and out, and then it gets compost out for you. But it's really, that distance here is 25 centimeters, 30 centimeters, maybe to the end of the drum, 50, 60, um, 70 centimeters to the end of the drum. So you could easily have a long glove and you could get that compost out with your hand otherwise develop the tool or you could have that pipe going right through like I did on my previous model and you could have a special like tool uh, pushy thing that you can just a metal rod with a handle and then at the end like a round, uh, a round plate that welded and then you can just push the compost out right out and as you push the compost obviously it will drop down so you can add more and obviously you're gonna fire that up with some good Australian red red uh, composting worms, not earthworms, but composting worms. They eat grass clippings and kitchen waste. No onion, no fish, no, <laughs> no citrus, no salt, no oil. And uh, they breed like rabbits and they multiply every two weeks. And that's what we got there. They're, they're like brilliant, brilliant. In my garden too, me holding 
a whole handful of those guys that, that that's them and they just breed like mad so that, that that's that that's the basics i know it's a bit of a rough drawing but uh i did explain it to you so let me take you on a actual you know outdoor and we're gonna build this thing um, on top you're gonna have sprinklers you'll see there's sprinklers that that was was drippers that come out because uh, you know th these pockets these pockets okay they come out they, they go in rows because there's these metal bars running yes and then you've got these that's where your planters are so i put little drippers just above each one and i'll show you how i did that so you push a screwdriver, a small screwdriver into the pipe and you just insert a sprinkler exactly um, where that line is so it just feeds the, uh, that thing and then the sprinkler has a little control you just turn it more flow, turn it less flow and then on the south side which is if we're doing uh, you've got these trays these are standard trays and it's a simple bracket that clips into the cage easily it's got like a little bendy hook and then it clips into the cage and you've got you know loads of these okay and these are all your microgreens and here I've got a tiny little sprinkler that sprinkles 360 and you get these little 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 valves for those little sprinklers and I just closed the valve to the same point so I've got sprinkler stands here so it just sprinkles water on the tray, and it obviously drips all the way down so uh, and I've got no you will have three of them because you'll have one tray here let me do it another color have one tray here, have one tray here, have one tray here. Three trays will fit on that 1.2 meter side. And then you'll have three of these little sprinklers standing and then they just irrigate right on top, like minimal wastage, and, and then that drips down. In fact, I would extend the tray, this tray, I would extend it to this, to include, just include these ones. So these are about 25. So, and that's 10, so it's 35 plus a meter. So 100 and, uh, 135 centimeters by 140. Go 1.4 by 1.4, you won't go wrong. Definitely not. So by 20 centimeters high, the tray. Then you've got gravel. Your gravel is at the same level as overflow. So overflow will be just below the gravel. Um, and that can take that water to a nearby tree or whatever and uh, then uh, so that's 13 centimeters of gravel and uh, around the pump put rocks about 70 centimeters of rocks so about here to here you'll have chunky rocks and there's your pump will sit here chunky rocks which allow water to come quickly to the pump because gravel backslogs the water um, and then you position your panel like that Okay, sun, sun is here, yeah, and your tallest plants will be here and make sure they don't over creep over your panel either. And uh, yeah, and as the sun hits the panel, the pump will irrigate. You could have a little sprinkler here, for example, and it will just irrigate down and it will be a self-sustaining system. And uh, the earthworm tea, um, it will drip into the tray and then that's the water that you're going to irrigate from so this is the fifth refined version of a food grower you can make it yourself in a day it's a super easy super fun project i don't think it's going to cost you more than 100 100 to 150 dollars no matter what country you're in maybe america you guys and uk but more price here yeah. but really it, it won like 150 dollars for everything including the drum maybe it was a tray an extra 50 dollars if you could maybe get something scrap uh, but you can build a wooden one as well so uh, you know as long as you line it with plastic and uh, maybe varnish it from outside for outdoory outdoory varnish you know that they'll last you well um yeah so that's that let's let's go and uh, let's go and build this thing and i'll show you step by step how we're going as i said when i actually build this fifth prototype i'll definitely record it and put it online it's just mad things now with the with the with the shelter course and finishing up the water course it's just uh, it's it's been quite busy working 14 16 hour days but rock on so i just looked at the screen and the previous drawing looks tad too small so and a bit messy so i just redrew that for you just so you know that i take pride in my work um 
So here it is. It's not in proportion and these legs are not going to be so long. We're talking about a 20 by 20 by 20 centimeter, those concrete blocks, four of them. You could even use, depends on the height you want it. If you want it slightly high, you can use, because it's 20 by 20 by about 40 high. Uh, or you can put them 20 by 20 down if you want the food grower slightly lower. Because as it is, it's 90 centimeters plus those 20, so it's going to be about 1.1. So it could be 1.3. But then there's less bending. So just play with it whether you put the block up or whether you put the block on its side. But here it is, okay? Uh, here's the tray, 20 centimeters diameter, okay, 20 centimeters height. Here's the overflow at 13 centimeters. Now remember that your gravel is at the top of the overflow level. So water will go up to the top of the flow and then the overflow will drain to the bottom of the overflow, leaving the sand dry and the soil dry. Well, you know. So sand and soil will make sure that if there's any smell or leachate, as we call it, from this drum, by the way, you need to have some holes drilled in there as well, um, so you know the leachate can uh, go down, and I'd put a bidum cloth, I'd put a bidum cloth, geotextile cloth, right at the bottom here, and in the, underneath the drum, and that will make sure that the worms and um, soil and the compost doesn't fall down, but it will let the you know, the, the, the leachate to go down. So lots of holes, maybe like 30, 30 holes, about 22 two centimeters diameter. Um, you know, if I give you a top view of the drum, it will be a lid like this and there'll be little holes like this all over. And then you're gonna put your cloth. Yeah? And it's also something I didn't, just thought of it now actually. Now these things are continuously evolving. Okay, so that will allow for the earthworm tea to drip out. Okay, mix with all that water, which is at the level of the bottom of the overflow, the gravel is to the top of the flow. I'm, I'm recommending 13 centimeters. You can maybe even push it to 15. Why not? Then you'll have more water there. Then the pump sits there, so there's one challenge. And I think I would actually move this entire pump scenario <laughs> to the side. And I know it sounds like I don't know what I'm doing, but I do, and I'm thinking it aloud, and that's why it sounds crazy. But the reason that you want to move your pump to the side is should the pump ever break? So the, all these rocks are going to be here. Should the pump ever break, you can easily take it out of here. So what I would actually do, this is what I would do. I would put a 110 mil pipe, like we did in the wetland, going all the way down. Okay, I'd put rocks. Uh, all over here, maybe uh, about 40 centimeters all around that pipe. I put big rocks, chunky rocks, which will allow the water to go in. I drill um, 20 mil holes around the pipe, like we're doing the wetland in the constructed wetland. Same story, maybe uh, yeah, up to the level of 15 centimeters. Lots of holes. Cover that with geotextile, so the water, so the roots don't go and block up the pipe. And then I'd stick the pump there, and if it ever goes, you can just grab the pump. It's a little thing, it's a little bulge, it's called a bulge pump, it's about that size, little thing. And then from there, you could run a, uh, a, an irrigation line along the side, and you know, off it goes. Okay, that will be actually your best choice, because should the pump ever break, you can maintain it. If it's in the middle, <laughs> you're going to have to empty the entire drum, remove it which is a big jewel, so this is for maintenance purposes. So that's, just, that's actually the reason of why I'm redrawing this for you and I didn't even realize it. So I have the pump on the side. Um, yeah, so about 40 centimeters of rocks. I explained that, but so that's 15 of, of gravel and 15 of water. Your overflow is at 15, then maybe then three centimeters of sand and then two centimeters of soil. And that will act as a biological filter, keeping all the smell within the structure and not letting it escape out and so nothing will smell. And that's a side view. Here's your tray. It will be 1.4 by 1.4, 1,400 millimeters. Um, because it was that being one meter, was these trays being 25, so it's 125 plus 10 overlap here, plus, you know, a five centimeter overlap there and then you've got uh, you've got a nice guaranteed thing that uh, we're not going to lose water so my, my, my thing when we irrigate too much it's it just the water leaks out you know so this tray would be a definitely a, a version 5 perfection so here we go 
there's on the south side on the shady side or on your tomato pole you could have the the the, the solar panel that faces the morning sun and then as the sun hits it little little panel this size maybe 30 by 30 40 by 40 just just size it correctly to your bilge pump tell it the shop this is what you need you want to push it um, 1.2 plus an extra maybe meter yeah you want to push it to about two meters high you want you tell them how you, you want water to go two meters high and you want it to have a little bit of a spray so it can cover one square meter of area in spray you could do that or you don't have to have spray you could have your drippers as in my training you could have drippers running just below the soil level uh, that's probably will be even better um, but then still the pump will need to have a little bit of a push to 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 get those drippers to push out but the drippers that i'm talking about they don't restrict water it's not like a little drip drip you can open them up to so go they're like little squirts and they actually go out you know the drippers will run along your lines of plants yeah so have a look at all the videos and uh they're, they're coming straight after this and um i hope you're gonna build a really nice food grower rock on Here's a compost chute that we're just installing, a proper, not gimmick size. So we've shoved it from one end and now we're going to dress the sleeve. Let me show us. And that's how we keep it, you know, from compost from falling, falling out. Yeah. That's good. So there is a new hole that we made. And now what we're going to show you is this compost chute, which was a, a pricey piece of equipment. Damon, come. So we, we're going to be, we're going to be putting paper around it. So when we fill this whole drum with soil, it's not gonna, all the soil is not gonna fly into our compost chute. And the paper will biodegrade so we're just going to use a bit of uh, cotton or hemp string that biodegrades or masking tape but it's got a little bit of glue i guess so hemp string or cotton string we're going to wrap the 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 the, pa the paper around this chute uh, and then we just tie it up Okay, hold this one, Damien. Just do one spiral. That's it. So now we're just gonna tie it up. What? Um, there is a cheaper way to build this compost chute using a blue drum. So you do a similar thing. We're just cutting out 50 mil holes all around, and you just do it with a blue drum. It's 10, 15 dollars for a second-hand drum. Those 200 liters, and it's perfect because inside there, with grass clippings and kitchen waste, real soil gets made, and it'll take you quite a while to fill that up. Um, yeah so we'll, we'll i'll show you this in detail but for now this is what i've got i had this pipe maybe that made it. it was quite a quite a fancy piece of equipment because it has a sideways chute so i can still have this top thing to plant more things into it more plants 
and that's why I had to have a side chute going sideways out and um, but it was very expensive I mean in South Africa it cost me three hundred dollars which is uh, quite a bit I mean a drum you can get for ten fifteen dollars and do it yourself same thing but then you can't have that top pretty thing above it unless you keep on moving it in and on and off um, another blue drum for example so you can do this for way way cheaper but you know I was going into expo so I wanted to um, impress others I guess but uh, for low tech DIY no need for this fancy shoot this was a PVC pipe yeah so here it is it's ready for planting made the holes if you're wondering what's gonna be happening here I'm gonna have wheat grass trays the shady side the parsley is love it the tatsoi likes it the, the, um, some Chinese cabbages some tatsoi is a Chinese type of cabbage but I'm gonna have wheat grass trays and sunflower trays put onto this thing on the south side or the automatic irrigation so I'm gonna have a whole sprouting system as well as possibly mushroom growing growing in the back but the sprouts I have done it it works so this is it we're gonna be starting to bring the soil hi Alosha here and um, yeah so I've got the food grower today I'm gonna to show you how I'm gonna inoculate it with earthworms and um, yeah Basically, I just went to my friend and collected some worms. Here they are. Don't be afraid. They are very, very cool. So I've got maybe 200 here and I've got two more boxes there from another friend of mine. <laughs> so basically, I started by throwing one bucket of soil in, into the bottom of this trough just so there's something for them so you're not throwing raw kitchen waste and worms so there's some spongy stuff for them just to get it going there's um, my paper is wrapped around the chute not to allow this soil to infiltrate inside to cover the whole thing up so you want it empty obviously so i'll show you now but the paper is still there slowly rotting away but you know that's why you need to start throwing stuff in the center which is your kitchen waste no citrus no onions no meat no fish so it's all your peels your tea bags your paper um, with obviously without plastic and um, all the other kitchen waste potato peels banana peels purple peels purple seeds I just throw everything in there except citrus onion and uh, meat or fish okay so Right in. Just to show you, there's hundreds here. There they are. Okay. I'm gonna throw in one more box. Okay. Then I'm gonna throw some kitchen waste. Was the water is fine. Um, so when you rinse out, when you rinse out the tea from the flask or teapot, I throw it all in the kitchen waste. Throw it in there. It's going to mix with earthworm juice, and then I've got a little drain pipe here for the earthworm tea, which you can put back over. So it's all good, just just like that. All your kitchen scraps. Okay. And then I'm going to throw one last box of earthworms. Look at that, it's lovely. This, these are real, these are the hard workers. Okay. So the, the, the plan for now, for, from now on is, you throw a whole bucket of kitchen waste with a little bit of uh, soil, just so there's no flies and none of that. So it just covers that nicely. And then the earthworm tea will drain out, which I'll show you soon. And then that earthworm tea you can throw over on top of us. And when it's all full and ready and the compost is ready in a couple of weeks, you start from that big in, in contraption on this side, you start getting the ready-made compost out while you're filling in kitchen waste from the top. Getting compost out, kitchen waste from the top. Um, I'm not gonna be adding any more worms. There was plenty of worms and they're gonna replicate. Gonna probably 
quadruple in volume within a month and then it'll just extend until this whole thing will be covered in plenty of worms as long as there's food they'll just replicate and worms can eat twice the amount of their body weight in uh, one day so if the worm weighs a gram he'll eat two grams of food i think one gram of food in one day so you eat entire body weight and and what he makes comes out on the back side <laughs> and like us humans who make poo his the earthworm's poo is soil ready made delicious organic soil that's what comes out out of the back side of earthworm they dig the soil up they eat the kitchen waste and they poop out organic soil so that's why you'll have excess which you could spread on top because sometimes the sinks but once you fill up here you can start using that compost anywhere else it'll be amazing organic soil using your waste no more worms added just add in kitchen waste and a little bit of soil and yeah let me show you the the drainage okay so this is the pipe I'm gonna add an extra pipe here a longer ones for the earthworm tea and I'm gonna put a bit of a mesh here so this doesn't get blocked up with stuff and um, like a foamy foam type of stuff uh, cut a foam the same size and then I've got I'll have a ready-made earthworm tea just draining out into a bucket a bit lower than this um, yeah that's it I mean it would be ideal if this side thing would be on the other side but it just didn't happen that way for me but obviously I'm gonna perfect the design with time I can see what works what doesn't work and then earthworm tea will drain out of here and that's liquid gold <laughs> so one step at a time you can see my weed grass is picking up I've got 10 trays here sunflower sprouts they're still moist because this thing is on automatic irrigation which was the biggest winner I had you don't need to worry about you can put plant grow seeds for propagation it irrigates itself eight every eight hours it's just phenomenal um, there we've been eating the weed grass I do one I eat uh, we juice one tray per day so really like full high production um, yep enjoy so <clears throat> here's some good compost from the kitchen Feed it in, two buckets. Also good to have a little <coughs> uh, thing of soil nearby ready <coughs> because soil acts as a natural biofilter. That was grass clippings. So any smell can be prevented by cover covering like five centimeters of soil. So it's gonna use a a tray prepped here, chuck it in. And then you close the lid. You don't even need a lid if you have soil. <laughs> That's it. That's that's the feeding of the towel basically. So I see the mistake we made here, the holes go past. The drum goes past the and then the holes on the side for the worms to come out so they can interact and poop into this main drum is higher than the soil. And obviously I can see compost there, which is not good, but you know all of these mistakes will be prevented in the the fifth prototype that I will be teaching you extensively how to do learning all these mistakes through trial and error so you you should to get the the best of what I've got <laughs> in terms of what I've experimented with this is a this is a fourth fourth machine we made um, yeah but the worms 
We're talking about worms. They're in my worm, other worm bath. Let me show you. Alright, let's set you guys up here. Okay, so this is a square drum, cut off square drum. So yeah, yeah, put some blocks around so uh, let's find those guys. There you go. I don't even need to go far. They're all here, right at the top. Waiting for more compost. Look at that. So I don't want to walk on that. I don't want to compress them. They're quite happy. I'll just give you one handful. Look at that. Loads, loads, loads. They're everywhere. Look at that. Look at that. Loads. So, basically what happens here, is I push the grass to the side, find a hole, and I excavate, put the soil to the side. See, there's some still old compost. Look look how they're attacking the butternuts. Okay. Okay, that's a mango pup. So, they are loving it. They are loving it. And, uh, oh wow. There's over 5,000 eggs on this mango pup. I don't know if you can see, but all these, all these little dots. So through a bit of observation, I'm learning just this observation, that worms love breeding around like cocoa peat type of mossy, not mossy, but hairy like this mango pup is very hairy they are this is their breeding zone i mean by me taking this seed alone to my food grower i'm guaranteed to have you know like five thousand worms within a month so that's the abundance look at all these eggs i mean i don't know if this camera can see but look at that um so how i feed them is I move this to the side. Okay. I mean, you don't even have to touch it, but you know, gets a bit smelly there, but there's obviously no smell. And you, look, I didn't have to touch it, so you don't have to touch it, but uh, here we go. Old sweet potato it was apple peels. Thank you very much. What do we have here? Mangoes, bananas, apples. Thank you very much. So, no oil. Apparently, it makes mites that uh, the earthworms don't like. No oil. No. Um, No meat, no fish. So actually I like to put the grass on top as a last layer. So I'm just gonna open it up. So again, cover it with some soil. Like instantly the smell disappears. No problem. Okay. And then I just, to make them happy, Put the grass clippings back on. Also, just keeps them moist and very, very happy. That's it. That's uh, that's the worm bath. So what's going to be happening here? Obviously, it'll get to a point where it's quite full. So you know, I'll have I'll shave a layer, 
and um, spread it around my garden and then um, then I can keep on topping up more. I don't know if you see that's it. So there's the worm bath. And of course there's got a pipe at the bottom that drains all the earthworm tea automatically. So also if I want more earthworm tea I can just water this thing a bit. And um and avocado trees coming out. Now that tree, it's 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 just abundance. And it's a little bath. So we're gonna top up the rest of the soil, and you knows maybe even plant one or two things in the corners, some creepers that you can that can cover this up that you won't see it is even there. Hey, so <laughs> this morning I'm gonna be harvesting some earthworm castings compost from the bottom because of the way I designed this shoot um, I'll be using this tool which has got like a little spokes you probably don't even need the spokes but uh, you just need a flat surface you can push the pipe goes right through it's at an angle so what I did was um, can I have a mesh first of all to harvest her compost tea because the pipe is at an angle all the earthworm tea drains out okay um, so I've got this mesh and then I've got a pipe here and the mesh is so the pipe doesn't get blocked up um, from all the compost, um, you know, earthworm poop, <laughs> which by the way, doesn't smell at all, okay? So the mesh is here to protect um, and then the liquids, they just come out to a bucket that's lower, gravity dripping into a bucket that you can now, that's like liquid gold. So, but besides the liquid gold, <laughs> let's get the solid compost. So, it's a bit wet. At the bottom, again, no smell. Uh, I see quite a few earthworms, but I just want to show you. I'm going to go from the other side, which you can't see, but the pipe basically ends up there. And I'm going to push it out. And let's see what's going on. I haven't harvested for months, so... Give a bit of a push. Now, if you can see anything, it should be coming out if this pipe is long enough. Have a look. There we go. Look at that. Okay, so that's pure. I'd say it's pure, pure diamonds. <laughs> so if you make the pipe that that pushing thing long enough, it will obviously all end up here. So for you to be able to put compost from top. And then obviously a little bit of soil so it doesn't smell. You need to be harvesting from the bottom. Because as you harvest, it just uh, comes down. There's not a lot of earthworms here because they're all at the top. Let's see if that theory works. Lots of eggs. Here, here it is. Um, lots of little worms. There's one guy. 
But let's see where, where the worms are. There must be somewhere. So I'm gonna get in from the top. Let me just move the camera. My hands <laughs> are filthy. No, they're not filthy. They're full of awesomeness. There you go. And look, this is way over designed. This is expensive and not meant for an average folk. You know, I was designing a product. In my model that I'll be presenting to you is way simpler, super cheap, and uh, you'll be able to do it yourself in one day. The whole thing. Okay. You know, they're somewhere. I'm not going to look for them. <laughs> In a hurry, but do one. I also need to feed them because you know what I'll do? So I'll go get some compost, I'll feed some earthworms, and in about a week they should be all around and I'm going to dig in there, so I'm going to go and put a few buckets right now. So, through all my tinkering, <laughs> I realized that the sponge as a filter doesn't hold. So, this is a compost chute. So I just put a piece of uh, this cloth and it's catching the, the earthworm poo and the debris and whatever else. And make sure that it's covered completely and there's my earthworm tea being drained obviously if this is standing on four concrete blocks the bucket can be right there and you don't need this fancy stuff but the bottom line is that my earthworm tea is draining let me show you where it goes goes to a bucket that's standing right there at the bottom from a food growing machine so just experimenting but I'm gonna get it right this is my fifth product fourth prototype so now I'm going to show you how to make your own food growing machine so um, starts with a drum you can use a, a jigsaw which is that machine that goes doo -doo 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 -doo. okay if you want to make any cuttings with that machine um, you need to have a little pilot hole so you know you could draw your lines have a pilot hole with a drill and then you go with the that machine through the pilot hole and you cut across you cut across okay I don't have that machine today here. I've got the angle grinder, big or small. It's quite a dangerous tool. So, but um, yeah, so I'm just gonna do one hole for you. Make sure you've got steady. Whenever starting the angle grinder, always start it like this because if the blade is broken, if you left it somewhere at funny places, the blade could split in all directions at three, well, a lot of revs per minute. <laughs> So always start because you've got this protection. So always start it away from your face like this. So now that we've got two holes, or one hole, okay, then we come with our gas torch. Okay. Now that you got your two holes cut, just warm it up, gently, all the way around. It's better to do this on a sunny day, because the drum is already warmed up by the sun, because this morning it was taking quite a long time. So 
give it a good warmth. Depends on the temperature of outside between two and three minutes. And don't shoot it at one spot because it will make flame and toxic smoke. Don't breathe in the smoke. So rather go from a bit further away and gently moving it around and around, warming up the whole area. Okay. Let's try this. Got a little log with a little nugget or some piece that pull it through. There we go. You could accelerate the space by putting a wet cloth um, to set it. But um, yeah, then the then the hole will set real quick if we've got a wet cloth. That's it. Once it's set, you're gonna have a beautiful hole um, that will allow a nice big vegetable to grow. I'm using a, a 12 centimeter, maybe even 15 centimeter log, but uh, 10 to 10 to 12 would be better. Um, yeah, and you make them one per section, two on the top section. Depends on your drum. What you get, I managed to get, squeeze some holes into the sides here. And uh, yeah, so here's the wet cloth. Nice cold wet cloth. Then we bring me a bucket. So I use it to cool it down, especially the corners here. Have a bucket nearby if you're working fast. Nice and wet. Nice and cold. There we go. Here's the hole. Um, I'm going to show you the drip irrigation system for that food growing machine that we have created. Okay, so this guy will ideally go under mulch, obviously, you can cover it with a bit of soil, but you know, I've done it as an afterthought. Um, if you're wondering why it's uh, a bit mucky, I actually had it all installed and was working, but I wasn't happy with the growth of vegetables. Hence, I was enlarging all the holes a couple of days back. So the holes are now about this size. So when your spinach grows, it can bush up nicely. But proof is in the pudding and give it a three months and then I'll show you what that guy is capable of. So it had a wetland at the bottom, uh, that green drum, part of a 5,000 liter tank or um, and the trough was had gravel and that was cleaning the water from the bath. The bath water came directly It cleaned itself and then it irrigated itself and that's why it has a, a, a filter that will stop the drippers and the sprinklers to it will stop um, Them from clogging Okay, so You get two types of sprinklers you get a sprinkler pipe and there's holes here every there's one there's one uh, so that will be coming in a spiral and this will do the edge so um, these are adjustable sprinklers you can turn them and you could have um, more water or less water coming in use a screwdriver just make a hole okay <laughs> apologies it didn't have one but really it's so easy just push it with a star screwdriver a small one and then these guys you twist them until they pop in and it's quite easy. Um, I've already made holes from last time. So, and then you set yourself up. And the, the reason I made the spacing is on that drum, then if you could just scroll there, on that drum I've got holes at certain distance apart. And, and they're all in a row. So I've made these sprinklers to feed an entire row of uh, plants so that's why the sprinklers in a certain space drip irrigation as Israel Israeli people have proven is the best and the most efficient way to irrigate all of this is under mulch under soil under mulch there's no wastage no evaporation they just feed the roots and that's exactly what the plants need especially in the dry conditions or when you want to save water 
Um, and I just want to show you one more piece. Um, if you made... If you made a, a mistake and you made a hole somewhere where you shouldn't, you get this little stopper, okay? And um, I use uh, pliers to get them in. And you just, you just pop it in. There we go. So, yeah, basically the water is going to come in whichever way, hose pipe or whatever pipe you've got. It's going to come through the filter, which if you're not treating grey water with this, you don't need this filter. If you've got straight municipal water, then you don't need it because municipal water it doesn't have bits and pieces, genuinely. Um, and then it's going to go around. I've got a stopper here. And this pipe is going to carry on that side, this side. And then this is just going to twist in the center so the rest of the drum gets fed. Drip, drip, drip. And um, here, I'm going to take the water up that chute. Into this pipe. Here, I cut it off here. So it's going to come into this pipe. And it's going to go up this chute to that little sprinkler. And I'll just direct it so it will irrigate this entire thing. So we'll have plants here. And we'll obviously have our plants here. Um, and then just one more thing. There is an extra irrigation pipe here. If you're wondering what that is for. That is to that will stand here and feed all these trays automatically on a timer. The whole thing will irrigate twice a day. You don't even need to worry about it. And your wheat grass and everything will just carry on. All you need to do is spread it, put the cardboard and leave it alone. <laughs> and that will do its thing automatically. And then six days later you come in and you harvest. So that's the idea, like a food growing machine. The idea here is to have a mushroom, mushroom um, growing bag in the shade, maybe two. Um, we had these manufactured reasonably badly. <laughs> we did it ourselves, but um, so how they work is two simple corners and out if I do this again I'd have a square um, a flat flat bar here going up across and there measure the right over this because these round ones they don't always come right but this is the idea that it clips over like that see what I mean yeah and then your tray goes inside so you have one two three four four you've got eight trays if you're not doing the mushrooms um on the south side where it's less sunny and then you're growing all your it could also act as a nursery you could propagate your seeds um for this yeah this is really efficient i, I let me tell you one two three four five one two three four five that's 25 30 25 um 50, 70, plus another 20, 90, about 105 to 110 plants just in the pockets. And then I've got about 30 plants here, which will go full size, obviously. So 140, if I'm lucky, 150 plants plus a nursery, plus the wheat growing and the sunflower seeds. There they are underneath the shoots. They should start germinating soon. There they are. It's coming through. It's coming through. And you know, it's just a food growing machine. And it's not a gimmick. You know, it's going to grow 150 plants plus your microgreens plus a bag of mushrooms at a time. Um, in pretty quick and pretty small space. 1.2 square meters. That's all it takes. 1.2 square meters. Everybody can put it on your balcony. But 1.2 square meters is very little space for 150 plants. So that's what we have. And um, oh, one more feature. Of course, we've got the compost chute. 
So our kitchen waste in here. No citrus, no onion, no lemons obviously, no onion, no garlic. Um, we started with two buckets of earthworms. Then it's got a, a shoot on the side here. And then it comes out here. And then ready-made compost will come out. It also has a lid with a little uh, tube which drains the earthworm tea, which you can have a bucket lower by. There's the shoot. I put a bit of bidum cloth here so this doesn't block up. And then this tube can obviously go to a bucket lower or if this is on the soil you'd have a hole dug down with a bucket and then you've got earthworm tea that drains out automatically. You start the compost with two buckets of earthworms and you just throw your kitchen waste. Maybe a little sprinkle of soil and, and on top, just a little bit just so you don't have the flies. And that's it, no smell, earthworm tea drains out, use it fresh, you can put that water back over so there's no wastage at all. And it grows your organic food using your kitchen waste and with a wetland, with a little wetland which is the same size, it'll use your bath water and it'll take wetland, water, water from that drum and um, irrigate itself and that's what I had. But the drum was underneath this. So it's quite a nifty piece of equipment. I hope you enjoy it and uh, speak soon. Hey, how's it? So, I'm going to show you <clears throat> so my cheap timer that was a circle disc only has 15 minute slots and 15 minutes for these trays for that should be fine because it's drip irrigation and I can control the drippers but for these guys they're just losing too much water at the bottom you know even with 10 trays 15 minutes so I want to reduce I want to reduce the the flow rate so I've got this mini little valve that I'm going to try out now so just a kitchen knife or scissors yeah, somewhere on the side here. Oh, <laughs> um, and you just push it in. Yeah, you push it in from the other side. Okay, so now with the valve, I'm able to control the pressure. So that's off, that's full. Yeah, I might even change the sprinkler because this is directional down like this at this angle. I might even put the sprinkler that goes flat and by reducing the flow, I'll still have the spread of the tray. And um, yeah, at the same time, yeah, let me do that right now. So we're tidying up our food grower. Just to show you how long the tomato vine is, and it's full of tomatoes. I think it's reaching close to... Yeah, sure. And look at that, spin has just gone up. It's completely covered the window, so the food grower can become an entire veggie garden for a whole balcony. Yeah. In a flat. Yeah, it can. It can. Cover the ceiling and with spinach and... Definitely it can. Yeah, it's awesome. So we're just tidying it up and we... Um, Tefaso, you could even run a few sticks here, 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 here and let them run along. Like okay. Why not? Yeah. yeah.
Cheers to water self-sufficiency and beyond. Mm. It's complete with a compost chute. So there you can see the reduction in size, which don't do that. The holes for earthworm, earthworms to come out. So I'd wrap this in paper. Um, but because of the uh, fault at the bottom, yeah, but basically <laughs> what I want just before I jump, I, I'd wrap all of this in like recycled paper or um, just white or paper, just wrap it around so the soil does not fill these things up. So they're closed and then, you know, with a bit of water, they'll biodegrade. And then that way you can leave this open for your two buckets of worms and uh, and compost so remember to put paper on the outside you can just wrap it in sheets of paper and then put a bit of recycled twine or something that can biodegrade like a like a natural twine string this is uh, the inlet for the compost and it's really well done and uh, just showing you how if you take a bit of time you can you know put it together but I it, it, it goes a bit beyond my level of expertise because I use heat and special strips of plastic to join it all together but we'll be making a much simpler version which works actually five times better but just showing you how it can look like okay and that's where you plumbing was really easy so I've got water coming in from this side uh, which can take normal hose pipe which you just screw on here uh, I did these fittings which you can get, you don't have to use clamps, you can get automatic clicking in and it runs up. You don't have to use this, I think it was an overkill, <laughs> I'm still was figuring it out. I had a timer here, the timer was able to irrigate this thing on your demand, but now that's why I went up and down and all of that. But anyway, nevertheless, you, you, you can skip all of that and then it goes through here. Drip irrigation, these are really cool because you can control the flow by turning them, how much flow comes out. And you can guide them to go on your rows of plants versus a normal drip irrigation pipe. And then, then I've taken it a smaller spiral that goes like this. And that's obviously to, to reach the plants that are not on the edges, but you know, the center of the drum. And then I have uh, that elbow that goes out and that's I can't cut it at the moment, but um, it has an extension piece that goes, that sits on top of that and extends all the way up. Um, and that extension piece gives you more plants on top of it. So that's it. And uh, yeah, we'll be filling it with soil now. So I'm going to put the compost chute in. This is my compost. Uh... Wally gave me this container, uh, it's like a three drawer and it's so nice to harvest my compost because I can now see the worms. This is my eggshells. Now, uh, this is the worm poo. Poo, yeah, the compost that I use. Are those eggs? What are those dots? Uh, no, this is the seeds Wally feed the birds with and all the birds are the shells of the seed. Now you won't actually find any here. Uh, this is made. This is ready-made compost uh, uh, yeah. from the worms uh, and also ready for application. Standing uh, with the jack underneath. Okay, for leachate. So you no. you you don't waste any water. None, none. No food gets wasted. And no water gets wasted no in this water. garden. No, nothing. I try to feed. Can you see here? This is now a. Uh, a new bin you know as uh -huh. i harvest then this one is empty then i start another bin um this is already just a few weeks it's turned you can see there's the compost the grass cuttings uh -huh. it's already made into soil but where's the oh, there's the worms there's the worms yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I can tiny see them. little worm huh? tiny oh, little there worm he is yeah. okay uh, oh, wow. there they are yeah you can see they basically most uh, uh, red uh, or the or the uh, tiger worms. Now this is newly made, just a few weeks, but look, they're all pregnant. 
I non-stop at six in the backyard. <laughs> 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 oh, I was still going to tell you how they uh, create their, how they mate. The one's head is this side. And, uh, and this is now where the clitellum is, mm -hmm. uh, where the egg is formed. Mm -hmm. So, so far, the other one's head is there. So they exchange sperm cells. They got like quite a few openings. No, I don't know. They've got like a couple of hearts there, you know? but they are openings. So the one sprays its sperm cells into the other ones and the other one that way. And then they both became pregnant. Oh, wow. <laughs> of course, they male or female. She would, and but they do uh, need each other. They can't reproduce if they don't have the other part. Only that silvery long worm, I told you. There are a couple of uh, composting worms that doesn't need a mate to reproduce. There, it's a red worm there. Oh, yeah. Is yeah. that a worm? No, that's the Shongalola. It's poisonous. What do you mean it's poisonous? Uh, I kill them. Why? They eat, they eat my worms. Oh. Came so, Natalie, you can't kill everything. Is good in nature. No, this this one eats my <laughs> worms, <laughs> and because it eats my worms, <laughs> how not... can it eat your worms? Oh, they they eat your vegetables. Yeah. They finish your vegetable potato. It finishes it, and also it's like a a, a, a fox. It's a hunter in the box. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is now ready. So uh, this is in progress. In You've progress, got two levels. two levels. What's happening underneath you there? You put another level on. You can bring it as high as you want. You see, I grab it. These were my potato. So she gets it from there. She cut off all the bins. Yeah. You got one. Then you put a lid. Yeah. And it's so nice. And, and because the lid's got that little pup, yeah. that's where you make your whole, all the leachate goes to yeah. there. Yeah. It's upside and down. These are the little air holes. Can you see how small they are now? It's to stop the beetles, you know, the Australian bean beetle to come through okay. here. And what so do they do? They are these white Okay, nuts. okay, okay. Yeah. That's now, this is exactly the start of, uh, the of a new... Yeah. Okay, so now this I now... Now, straight away... Into that? Into your new grass. So, cutting. this was that... Yeah, and you then can put straight away your plants in there. And this Pumpkin, is how it grows. Pineapple, tomato. Pineapple. Yeah, oh, wow. and uh, you see the worms were behind it. Can you see? Yes. The yes. worms eat now the remaining eat of the... The, the, the. They eat this, but because they can see this one doesn't need this. It's forming, uh, it, it blocks roots growing out here. Uh -huh. So, what you do, you pull it off. Uh -huh. So you keep it clean and roots will now come. I didn't root this. So you make a little stem. Can there? Yeah, can those you are see? you can see roots. Yeah, they are roots. They are roots. They are roots. And now you, just you make a... just a little hole and push it in there again. And next time you'll see how big the uh, and that's so. how you did those other pineapples yeah. you were showing them. Yeah. That's yeah. that's that stuff. Yeah, that's same, same way. Same way. Same way. And uh, this is now also your uh, milk cartons, eggshells. This is all newly I'm made. I'm buying a shredder. <laughs> or you don't even need a shredder for paper. Or it's Look, better to shred the paper. This is this is what I covered up. Pineapples. Now I can smell the smell, but as soon as yeah, you lifted the paper. This is just a few days ago. And you look at that. Look at the little seeds that also come out. This is new compost. That's not even two weeks. Not even two weeks. And you can grow in it already. Already you can grow. Can you see? Are they all pretty, sir? Lots of They're babies. Oh, babies, yeah. Wow. And then you cover this with just your uh, newspaper. And they love all this. So you use uh, all your things like that. And here... Actually, sorry, can, it, can this be upscaled if I dig like a big pit in the garden? No, the, uh, the water, the rain water will connect. But if it's, a, your, but if it's a raised thing? A raised thing, raised. but like a mother, big, hey, like 4,000 yeah, liters. Yeah, but your, um, the whole idea is uh, you've got 
enemies of the worms would be your moles, your rats, your okay, mice. Okay, okay. So yeah. you need cement. Uh, you, you need cement. Got uh, it. Okay, so it, if I want to do it on a large scale, go through plastic. Yes, of course. So you need like a cement base. You see, all over here, cemented. Uh, it's paving slabs that I just push through, so water can still go through, but no rats, mice, or moles can go in there. Got it. Otherwise, so they, they'll to, eat them. They will. They will finish your bin in a day. Okay. They, got so it. quickly, and and birds too. So that's why you've got to protect it. So is the uh, shredding necessary or can one put big sheets or they can. just clump up? Just wet it, if it's wet. I used to put just near, uh, but my husband gives me bags full of the shredder. So it's said, better to shred it, it yeah, goes quicker. It goes quicker. Otherwise sometimes there's a big clump yeah, of paper, yeah. it doesn't and break it, down in a hurry. And it dries out. Whereas I find it doesn't dry out so much. Now you can see this was full of this paper. Natalie, this is glossy paper. Can you use glossy paper as well? Uh, no, it's not gloss. No, it's, it's not. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, no, no glossy paper. But ink is okay. Yeah, ink is fine. It's a, uh, a plant-based ink and nowadays what they use. They don't use chemicals. Oh. Uh, but you can see it's already turned into compost. Was that paper how long ago? Not long, not long. No, I think they started as a new So paper. quickly. A couple, a couple years so ago. you can start can you see how beautiful the compost is? Yes. I've got too much compost now. I've got too old. This is gold. <laughs> and I, I plant all my things. So what and I was thinking, bin. yeah, the whole thing. And uh, and you don't make them too big. I see you can no. make two out of one big bin. Yeah, I cut uh, This was a little water. Um, oh, and why can't something. you make it 200 liters? Uh, then you have to climb down. It's too difficult for me to harvest. Okay, so, so cut them in half. So as you get older, you want and a child. You've got to accommodate people with disabilities. So old Fantastic. Age. And, and so people in a wheelchair schools. can do this yeah, easily. Now you'll see there's a... Everywhere you got a... Oh, here. there we go. And then I just throw it over here. Oh. There's a worm. You see worms everywhere. <laughs> So I just put it back. I put my insects back like uh, praying mantis. They're all my friends. But those other red worm, oh, the no, chongololo, no. you kill them. Yeah, yeah. This you can use if you want to uh, just collect your worms. So you put your vegetable waste and things. And your, uh, because I haven't got waste here, they haven't come up. But you can uh, just put Oh, what do you mean? So wait, you, you put waste in here. You put it down. You put your kitchen waste in here. Yeah, you and they'll come up through those holes. They do. Hundreds of them. Yeah. Can they smell it? So how do they know it's uh, there? They always come up. They, uh, That's I, what I they do. I suppose they must smell uh, whatever, you know. Yes. But uh, they've got very sensitive skin worms. So they can feel vibrations. They're blind. Okay. So, so the next thing you've got a full bucket full fulls of worms. Oh, yeah, and it's easier for me to put this than in a new bin with grass cuttings. You don't yeah. have to dig worms individually. Yeah. But can you see this is already made? Can you see how it's broken up the the the, the beautiful, isn't it? Wow. Gorgeous. Smell there. No smell. Ah, it's awesome. So soft. Like this gold. soil. This, this is gold. This is yeah. gold. This is gold. Do you know how long nature takes to make and that? That's, that's six weeks. Do you know how long nature takes to make that? Five hundred years per inch. Yeah. Can you believe it? I thought here, all these were very, very steep. You can see each bed's been filled all over with my grass cuttings and things. This, these two beds are on the second level. Underneath, there was another that I put another thing on so you know I'm trying to level the backyard so my soil is beautiful yes. and it was like beach sand the worst soil ever sure but uh, it gives you a, a idea you yes. know if I don't want too much uh, uh, water in then I put the solid um, Bins. The others, if I want water in there, look at all those seeds germinating. Yeah, 
I gave a handful to an African lady on the farm to grow in her back uh, where her kaya is so she can have these it's the New Zealand uh, blue pumpkin you remember those? yes, yes, you showed me yeah. pictures if you want, you're welcome I'll give you the dry pips yeah, I'll take a couple of dry pips you see yeah, it came up all in this now you just put it back and it will decompose again look at all the, the worms here it's just worms, worms. Those will drop in a, an hour or two. Wow. Little, little white capsule. So that's, no, no, that's a whole like cycle a here. Yeah. And uh, the bottom one is solid earth, mate already. Ready for harvesting when yeah. you need it. Here is uh, worms and compost. Can you see? Here they mate. There we go. There they might. Yeah, you can see how they oh, might. Okay, yeah. Can you see? Yeah. There's the clitellum and there's the other one's clitellum. Huh. And they are the same size. It needs to be the same size and the same species. They don't mix bread like, like people. <laughs> <laughs> so a, a, a red won't mate with a, a tiger worm. Oh. They're two different species. You can see the little ends of orangey lines on it. Yes. Now so they can mate the for a few hours, or if you disturb them, then they just pull apart. But only one injection, I call it the injection, the spray of their sperm into the other one's body, openings, uh, is all it needs. If the other one dies, that one can keep on producing because it's still got sperm left over for months on end, for a whole year. Even if it's dead? If the mate is dead. Okay. So you've only got now one left. Yeah. And uh, the other one's deposit of sperm into his body sure. is enough. To, there it pulls apart. Can you see how they now pull apart? Because of the, the light. They're so sensitive to light. Now it... Even, uh, you can see how big their clitellum is. They could be like that for hours on end, or just a uh, quickie. <laughs> and then they, the poor, uh, they, yeah, no, they, then they just skedaddle into the soil again. That's now, phenomenal. You can see it's sex non-stop here. <laughs> and uh, you can see these are all new bins with the compost. <laughs> Just non-stop. Yeah. You can see how they eat. Huh? They love them. So long as it's moist. When you squish, you must be able to squish nearly a drop. If it's more than a drop, then it's too wet. How oh, recent? Uh, because it kills the oxygen in the... Uh, this is very recent, a few weeks. Oh. Two weeks, perhaps. You know, as I empty the one, it's empty, then I straight away with the new green grass cuttings and leave it for uh, till it's cooled down then I put to just mm. sometimes a hundred sometimes 50 or whatever amount but I've got now so many worms doing so well look at this this is also new look how quickly they've turned this one in look at the beautiful compost sure. <laughs> look at Thousands. Huh? The more worms you have, the quicker the breakdown process. Yeah, that's why I say they can create from a ton of uh, bio waste a day. So, turn into, how many worms did you buy to start this? I had about you know a couple of times I ordered and they delivered it to my job post office, and I said you must tell me when the worms for courier arrived. They never told me, and I went there a week later. It she said. Whose worms they were crawling up the wall, <laughs> <laughs> and I managed to get a a, a, a couple that survived, you know. But Just a, a few, like a handful. You know, uh, a little bit. Because the the food supply ran out and things yeah. a long time. So instead of my order, but altogether about a thousand, but that's over a period of a month or so. You've a got, and how many times. you think you've got I now? I started off with 50 or 100. Uh, what do you think you've got in your garden now? 
Million. Everywhere. In the front, you'll see the little earthworms popping up. Because I put seven of the refuse, that size 90 liters a year around my uh, golden, uh, ach, my yellow trees. And I leveled it off in the long beds full of worms. Sure. I didn't even take the worms out. And then just grass cuttings on top. And that's all. That's how the trees have grown so big. Those yellow woods over there. And I gave over 3,000 to school seedlings that I pl uh, collected the seeds, sow, and uh, planted them in, in little seed bags to the schools to plant them. They buy book now, look for Indian schools, African schools, all over KZN. Voila, it's that easy. <laughs> <laughs>